ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان سيدنا ونبينا محمدا عبده ورسوله ارسله الله تعالى بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله وكفى بالله شهيدا وصلوات الله وسلامه عليه وعلى اله واصحابه ومن استنى بسنته واهتدى بهديه الى يوم الدين يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان خير الكلام كلام الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل بدعه ضلاله my dear respected brothers and sisters in al islam let me begin as always by humbly requesting that the brothers move forward sit close together fill in the gaps and thereby make room for your brothers who will come late I also humbly request as always that you turn off these electronic devices, cell phones and pagers that have a tendency to ring at the most inopportune time and disturb us during our ibadah. And last but not least, we humbly request as always that you open your ears, your minds and your hearts <coughs> to what I'm about to say. Brothers and sisters, I would like to begin today's sermon. I like to preface it, I should say. with a few words on american schools american schools brothers and sisters as muslim parents should give us a great deal of pause american schools are becoming increasingly violent and unsafe in this year alone 74 people 74 people have been killed or wounded in american school shootings brothers and sisters it's april early april let that sink in in 3 months and a few days 74 people have been killed or wounded in american school shootings and this is not happening <clears throat> only in high schools in public schools in poor neighborhoods or to disadvantaged kids it's happening in elementary schools in private schools and to privileged kids another cause for pause is indoctrination brainwashing facile de mal teachers and administrators in these schools teachers and administrators that we trust to educate our kids to teach them reading and writing and arithmetic and set them on a path to a career of some sort these teachers and administrators in many cases are telling little boys first graders second graders and third graders who may see a doll in the class and want to play with it or may like to wear pink Little girls who like to climb trees and prefer blue. 
telling them that God made a mistake, put them in the wrong body, and they should go home with their little seven or eight-year-old selves and tell their parents they should transition. They need to transition. They need to get gender corrective surgery to right God's wrong. Brothers and sisters, these are just two examples, and inshallah there will be a separate chutzpah at some point where we'll talk about this in more detail. I could go on and on, but the point is, because I really want to get to the real subject, the point is that before it's too late, we as Muslim parents need to come to the realization that our kids need their own school, an Islamic school. Or at the very least, we need to really support our weekend Islamic school. Expand that school. Maybe make an after-school program, extension of it. We have to support this school. Hopefully we'll come to that realization before, before it's too late. Now after that brief introduction, I'd like to talk about the importance of giving. This is what I came to talk to you about today, the importance of giving. Brothers and sisters, over the next few days, we will be given a number of opportunities in the month of generosity to be generous and to give as we should. In this sermon, I want to make sure we know what's at stake if we ignore these opportunities and what we stand to gain if we seize them. Brothers and sisters, we should give. We should give because giving, brothers and sisters, protects us like a shield from entering the fire. And that's right, brothers and sisters, we can actually avoid punishment, and we all want to avoid being punished. We want to go straight to paradise. We can avoid punishment by giving something, anything. The Prophet said in the hadith, اِتَّقُ النَّارِ وَلَوْ بِشِقِّ تَمْرَةِ Protect yourselves from the fire, even if only with the peace of a date. With a peace of a date. In other words, O oh Muslim, you can protect yourself, shield yourself from the fire by giving something which is generally considered inconsequential or trivial. And this is something, brothers and sisters, which the early Muslims, they took it literally. They took the Prophet's words literally and believed with certainty that no matter how trivial it was, whatever they gave, it would have an effect. It would make an impact. It was worth giving. In one hadith, حَثَّ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ وَسَلَمْ النَّاسِ عَلَى الصَّدَقَةِ The Prophet encouraged people to donate voluntarily or to give voluntary charity. So a man, Abu Aqil al-Ansari, Wismuhu al-Habbab, he came and he said to the Messenger of Allah, Ya Rasulullah, Bittu laylati ajurru bil jariri, ajurru bil jariri al-ma, hatta niltu sa'ini min tamar, faamsaktu, faamsaktu ahaduhuma li ahli, he said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, when you made the call asking people to donate charity, I didn't have any money. I didn't have anything to give. So I spent last night working. Working for hire, drawing water from the well and delivering it to people's homes until I made eight handfuls Two measures, eight full handfuls of dates in wages. I took half of that and gave it to my family. And I brought the other half, four full handfuls to you to give in charity. Brothers and sisters, take a second, pause, and think about that. Four handfuls of dates. How many dates is that? 20, 25? What's a dollar amount you put on that? Not anything significant. Ten bucks, maybe? That man didn't say, ten bucks, what's that going to do? What good is that? 
And when he brought it, the messenger of Allah didn't say, Ten bucks, that's all you got? The Prophet ﷺ graciously, happily accepted what that man could give, as little as it was. And there's something else in this hadith that I want to mention before I move on, and that is, this man, when he was called upon to give charity, didn't have anything. He could have just said, Saudi Rasulullah, you caught me at a bad time, I just don't have anything. Catch me next time, maybe next time. That man went to work all night to make money to give. Shows you that these early Muslims, they would find a way to give instead of finding a way to avoid giving. Oh, they're going to have a fundraiser? Oh, I'm not going. I'm not going to go there. They would find a way to give. Brothers and sisters, that would be like one of us being told, hey, we need money. We're trying to raise money to revamp the restrooms. Oh man, I'm a little overextended this month. You know what though? I can Uber. I'll Uber tonight. And whatever I make from Ubering, I'll give it to the masjid for the restrooms. I'm going to work an extra shift at work. And whatever I get in overtime, I'll give it to the masjid for the restrooms. That's what that's like. That's what we should be like. They are our example. They are the gold standard. This man didn't have, he found a way to get money to give. Didn't look for a way to get out of giving. Brothers and sisters, we should give. Because training ourselves to give, give of what we love, money, makes us entitled to paradise and we all want to go to paradise. We're all looking for a way. A one-way ticket to paradise, this is it. Allah says, لَن تَنَالُوا بِرَّا حَتَّى تُنْفِقُوا مِمَّا تُحِبُّونَ وَمَا تُنْفِقُوا مِنْ شَيْءٍ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ بِهِ you will not achieve al bir until you learn to give from what you love. And whatsoever you give, Allah is well aware of it. Lan al bir you won't achieve al bir Ibn Abbas, Ibn Mas'ud, Mujahid, they all said, Ya'ni lan al jannah You won't reach paradise until you learn this. Until you learn to give from what you love. Ata, he said it means. It means until you give voluntarily despite being healthy and covetous, until you learn to give at the time when giving is the last thing you want to do. And as far as the meaning of whatsoever you give, Allah is well aware of it, it means. Whether you give a little or a lot, Allah is well aware of it and will give you a reward for it. Whatever you give, $5, $10, some pocket change, it will not be belittled, disregarded, or dismissed by Allah. Brothers and sisters, we should give. Because when we give, we are not, as many people think, throwing our money away or making others rich. People call for charity, people run out of the hall, and when, on the way out, they say to their companion, man, I'm not giving them my money to make them rich. Brothers and sisters, that's, that's the wrong mentality. Brothers and sisters, when we give for the sake of Allah, in these good causes, we are investing in ourselves, investing in our futures, investing in our hereafter. We are preparing our shade on the day when the sun will be brought close and pound people with its blazing heat. The Prophet said in the hadith, Kullu mri'in fi dhilli sadaqatihi hatta yufsala bayna nas Every person will be in the shade of his or her charitable offerings until judgment is passed. And here I want to pause and mention a story that was shared by one of the great scholars of Islam of the contemporary period, Muhammad ibn Salih Uthaymin rahimahullah ta'ala. He mentioned that when he was a young boy, there was a man who was very generous, who told him, he said, Kuntu bakhilan. I wasn't always generous. There was a time when I was very stingy, very miserly. And I would prohibit my wife from giving anything of my money in charity, even things that people would normally throw away, I wouldn't let her give it to someone. That's how stingy I was. Until one day, I was sleeping, and when I was sleeping, I had this dream. 
But it didn't seem like a dream. It was so real. It was so vivid. It was as if, It was as if I was there on the day of judgment. And the sun was so close to the people, I could feel its heat. The people, they were in so much distress and hardship, being pounded and battered by this heat, and I could feel the heat. And the people, they were weaving through each other, like waves trying to run from the heat and the hardship. Where can you run on the day of judgment? There's no way to run. <coughs> Then he said, as I'm feeling this heat, all of a sudden, something came, kalkisa, looked like a garment or something. It came over my head and shaded me. It was giving me shade, but... In that garment, there were three holes. Tadkhul al-shamsu minha. And the sun was coming through those three holes. If only those holes were closed, I would have been completely shaded. Faja'a shay'un yushlihu at-tamarat. So then something came, looked like dates. And those dates came and filled those holes until I was completely shaded. فاستيقظت. He said, استيقظ. He said he woke up and he was متأثر غاية التأثر. He was shaken by that dream to the point that he went to his wife and he said, "You won't believe what I saw in his, in his dream." He told her about the dream and she said, "إن الذي رأيته الحق." What you saw is true. What you saw is Allah سبحانه وتعالى giving you guidance from on high while you were sleeping. A poor man came in need of clothing. So I gave him from your fiab, I gave him one thobe, an old thobe of yours. Another one came and he was hungry. And so I gave him three dates. That shade that you had, that shade that you saw, was the shade of that thobe. And the holes were filled by those three dates. هذا وصلى الله وسلم وبارك من محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك من محمد وعلى آله وصحبه Ajmai. <coughs> Brothers and sisters, we should give. Because as we said, giving is an investment. And when we invest by giving in Allah's cause, we are investing with Allah. An investment with Allah is guaranteed to pay dividends, guaranteed to turn a profit, a major profit. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grow that charity. Better than any brokerage firm can grow our financial portfolio in this world. He will grow that charity until it exceeds what we gave many folds, hundreds, thousands, millions fold. In the hadith, the Prophet said, مَن تَصَدَّقَ بِعَدْلِ تَمْرَ مِن كَسْبٍ طَيِّبٍ وَلَا يَقْبَلَ اللَّهُ إِلَّا إِلَّا طَيِّبٍ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ يَتَقَبَّلُهَا بِيَمِينٍ ثم يربيها لصاحبها كما يربي أحدكم فلوه حتى تكون مثل مثل الجبل. He said صلى الله عليه وسلم in this hadith whoever gives in charity the equivalent of a single date from legitimate earnings and Allah only accepts charity that is good from lawful sources. Allah will accept his charity with his right hand and cultivate it for him. Cultivate it for him or her who has given it like one of you raises and nurtures a baby colt. Until he or she comes on the day of judgment and finds that date given in charity is the size of a mountain. From a date to a mountain in charity. that you gave 
from your lawful earnings for a law's sake. Brothers and sisters, what, what more do we want? It's an investment, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لنتبور. it will never fail. It can only produce positive results. Another reason we should give, brothers and sisters, is because giving is all we will want to do and all we will wish that we had done when death comes to us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَأَنْفِقُوا مِمَّا رَزَقْنَاكُمْ مِنْ قَبْلِ إِنْ يَأْتِيَ أَحَدَكُمُ الْمُوتُ فَيَقُولَ رَبِّ لَوْ لَا أَخَّرْتَنِي إِلَىٰ أَجْلٍ قَرِيبًا فَأَصَّدَّقْ وَأَكُمْ مِنْ الصَّالِحِينَ Spend from what we have provided for you. Before death comes to one of you, and he says, O oh my Lord, if you would only grant me respite for a short term, give me a little more life, allowing me to to what? To go on a shopping spree? To buy a bigger house than the one I lived in in the world? To buy a fleet of cars that I'll never drive? To eat one last time at my favorite restaurant? La wallah. Fa'asaddaq. Let me go back for a short time to give charity wa akumina salihin and to be from the righteous. This is what we want to do, brothers and sisters. We have the time now, the opportunity is here now, we need to seize that opportunity, take that opportunity and give before it's too late. Last but not least, we should give brothers and sisters, because when we are all in together, everyone doing what each of us individually can to achieve our common objective, our potential is unlimited. The things that we can do, the things we set our sights on to do, we can do those things if we're all in together, each one of us doing what we can, a little or a lot. But when some of us opt out or refuse to participate despite being able to, there's only so much we can do with limited resources. On this point, I want to give a real life practical example to show you this is real. This is not something theoretical. This is something real and possible. Barack Obama, you may have heard of him. He's pretty famous and he did something pretty historic. I don't mention him because I'm a fan. I'm not. And it's not who he is or what he did that's important, but it's how he did it. When he ran for president the first time, 2008, he raised, listen to this number, $95 million. Not over a year span, not over the duration of a campaign. He did that in a two month span, two months. Between February and March of one year, he raised $95 million. And most of that money, 90% of it to be exact, didn't come from millionaires, didn't come from big donors. It came from small, $100 or less donations from regular working people like you and me. <clears throat> his supporters, who believed in his cause, they didn't say, what's $5 or $10 or $20 or $50 or even $100? What's that going to do in the grand scheme of things? You know what they said? They understood that there is strength in numbers, and if enough people give whatever they can, their little contributions can add up to a lot. So brothers and sisters, you can see from this practical example, we can do great things if we all do our part. And so let me close with this by saying, brothers and sisters, when you're called upon in the next few days, Helping Hands is here tonight, the Islamic School will fundraise this weekend, and our general fundraiser for the masjid the Masjid's General Fund will be next weekend. You're going to be asked, called upon to give. The opportunity is there. Seize it. Give what you can. Divide what you can give. Give some to Helping Hands, some to Islamic Tools, some to the Masjid General Fund. The General Fund, which is trying to make your experience in the mosque the best experience for you and for your kids, for you and for your families. Improve the restrooms. Create a, play, a space for the kids to play. Expand the mosque. These are the things we want to do, but we need your help. When these opportunities are presented to you this weekend, please invest in yourself. Respond to the call. Protect yourself. Shield yourself from the fire. Stamp your ticket 
to paradise and give what you can. Allahumma عز الإسلام والمسلمين وذل الشرك والمشركين ودمر أعداءك أعداء الملة والدين وانصر عبادك الموحدين يا رب العالمين اللهم من أرادنا أو أراد ديننا أو إخوان المسلمين في أي مكان بسوء فأشغله في نفسه واجعل كيده في نحل واجعل تدبيره تدميرا عليه يا قوي يا عزيز اللهم اشفي مرضانا ومرض المسلمين اللهم اشفي مرضانا ومرض المسلمين اللهم اشفي مرضانا ومرض المسلمين اللهم اجعلنا من أتقائك أتقاء رمضان اللهم اعتق رقابنا من النار اللهم إنك عفو تحب الأفو فعف أنا اللهم ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وفينا عذاب النار وقوموا لصلاتكم
brothers and sisters if you could just give me a couple quick minutes uh, for the announcements it's going to be anyway difficult for you to get out anyway so just give me a couple quick seconds of your time so that we can allow people to slowly leave the masjid and slowly pull out uh, we are full we have approximately 300 people today uh, in the masjid alhamdulillah if everyone in this building is able to donate fifty dollars a month we would be able to be more than cover our daily monthly expenses of this masjid. Use this blessed month of Ramadan to renew your monthly pledges or start your monthly donations so it can be multiplied greatly during this blessed month. Uh, tomorrow night we will host a large iftar for everyone here. Uh, right before Isha, we will have a fundraiser for an Islamic school. All are invited. Please bring yourselves, your families, your friends, and more importantly, your checkbooks. Uh, as we are now halfway through the month of Ramadan, uh, the last 10 days of Ramadan are, fast, uh, are closely approaching. Uh, on the ninth, uh, night of April the 10th, and that's Monday night, uh, we will open the masjid for etikaf. If you wish to stay in etikaf, please bring your own toiletries, uh, bedding, and sahur. Uh, we do have a new shower. Uh, we will provide a few staples of food for those who are staying the night. Uh, starting on the uh, night of 10th, there will no longer be a group with their prayer at night. The wither will be held after Qiyam al uh, Qiyam prayer will start at 3 a.m. the morning of April 11th or the night of April 10th. Uh, the Hafiz will continue the recitation of the Qur'an and anticipates that we will complete the Qur'an on the night of the 27th, which is April 17th. Uh, we are planning an Eid festival after the weekend or the weekend of Eid. We are looking for volunteers. 
Uh, if interested, uh, please see me or Sister Aisha, I'm sorry, Sister uh, Sheila Jihad or uh, Iman Jaber. Those are volunteers that will help with activities for the Eid Festival. More uh, information of that will come in the next few days and weeks. Uh, we also still have our Ramadan 27-ounce uh, water bottles for sale. There's a limited edition of those. Uh, we're encouraging people not to waste during this month of Ramadan and to mitigate the loss of donations from not having the lunches. We ask that you purchase those and use those to do that. Finally, and maybe the most important message today, is that Zakat al-Fitr is set at $10 per person. This is by the research that we've done, by the, appro the appropriate amount that should be paid per person in your household. This includes everyone in your household, children, mothers, parents, everyone, even guests who are visiting during that week. Um, boxes are outside. This needs to be paid before the Eid day, at least in some mahad before the Eid prayer, but we need to get it out to the people. The most important part of it is to get it out to people who are needy, and that process takes time. So we're asking if you can give it today, give your zakat al-fitr, which is fard on you. If you give it today, you have done your responsibility, and we can get it out to the people that are needy and that are needy. Also, be very careful leaving today. There is an inordinate amount of people today, alhamdulillah, mashallah, but our parking is completely full and we're actually double parked in some spots. So as you leave, please be cognizant of the traffic flow. Be kind to your brothers and sisters. Help people that are out there. Be slow as you're coming out of the grassy fields so that your cars don't get stuck. So please, 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 I ask you be patient with each other and move in an organized fashion. Jazakallah Uh, one final announcement. If there is a brother who is a locksmith or sister who is a locksmith, we have a brother who accidentally locked his keys in his truck. So if you're a locksmith or can help out, uh, please see uh, our brother. He's in the Musalla. He has a yellow jacket on uh, or the large uh, semi truck that is parked next to the trash can. So if you're a brother or a sister that can help with the locksmith, please see this brother. Just on the lockdown.